Thank you guys for watching the Animal One Guys YouTube channel. If you like my content, leave a comment down below. Ask me questions, let me know what you liked about it. And hey, click on the little like button. But please, if you want, go ahead and subscribe because it helps my channel out. That way you can stay up to date with all my videos. And if you want, click on the bell icon to get notified. Right? Right? Huh? One out of two. Not bad. Hey there, Reptile Rescue family. You know what's happening. It is the end of brumation time. Or going to be, depending on when your bearded dragon brumated. Uh, and we'll talk about that. But what, did it, what do you do? How do you know brumation's over? What should you be doing with your reptile? Uh, how do we keep these bearded dragons? And there's other reptiles and lizards that brumate. But what? how do we know brumation's over? So this is an important question because I have two bearded dragons this year that didn't go into brumation in their normal schedule, although there's still plenty of time for your guys' bearded dragons to start brumation, and there's plenty of time for them to stay in brumation. But for those bearded dragons that went in in August and in September, right around now is typically the wake-up time, but not always. And so one of the most important questions is, how do I know if brumation's over? So Archimedes here is still well in her brumation. She's dazed. She's leaning over the edge. And most importantly, she's not basking. Now, there are some cons to doing brumation the way I do it, as well as pros. And I believe the pros outweigh the cons. But for me, when I notice my bearded dragons go into their caves for brumation, I shut off the UVB light. And if I was using a light it heat source, I would use the ceramic heat emitter to keep the cage climate controlled, but keep the light source down. What this allows is it allows the bearded dragon to brumate anywhere in the tank where it's dark, it's still fine. They don't have to stay secluded in there. But what this does is it can make it harder for people who don't know to identify when brumation is over because if they go in their deep cave, they will stay in that until brumation's over if you have lights going. And then when you see them come out, you know brumation's over. In this instance, I know behavior-wise when brumation's over, but newer owners may not. Just look at Mongo right here, who's brumating on his log. He's in full brumation still, but he's out. He actually looks like his hammock fell down during brumation. But that's just choosing where to be. So again, for me, this would be a behavior thing to tell. But let's say you made it simple on yourself and you did the cave brumation way and now they're out of the cave. What do we do? Those are some questions that we're going to talk about. We're going to address now. What do we do after brumation is over? And everyone can say hi to Mr. Freeze because he was the first bearded dragon I had go into brumation and... He happens to be the first one out. Just because they're the first in doesn't mean they'll be the first out. So what happens now? Okay. He was brumating uh, in this log, actually, the entire time, even though his light was off. And yesterday night, he came out onto this platform, which is where his heat goes. So I knew he was ready to get out of brumation. So first things first. One is, because I control my heat, on dimmers was to turn his heat back up start getting this guy warmed up to the proper temperature for today this is because he came out at night in the evening if he would have come out in the morning he could have heaten up and he could have eaten but because he came out at night it would have taken too long for his body to heat up the temperatures go down in the night time he would have ate wouldn't have been good for him so number one is to make sure you turn your UVB on if you shut it off. I recommend shutting it off because you're killing the UVB. You're wasting it. You can use a normal light bulb if you want to keep a day and night cycle, but you don't need to use the UVB bulb to turn up the temperatures to be correct if you set them down. Three, let your animal bask before you feed them. So if they come out in the evening, six, seven o'clock, and you have your lights set to shut off at eight, eight thirty. There's not enough time there for them to come up to temp, eat, and then the nighttime hits and their temperatures drop. So, <laughs> I know I'm filming you. You're looking like a proud man. You feel rejuvenated. So, go ahead and let 
the them stabilize. Two, before you feed them, you really should weigh them because then you can know how much of their body fat they lost during brumation. And this is typically a very healthy thing for them to get rid of excess fat. That way you can start your feeding trend right away. So we've weighed them, we've let them come up to temperature. I like feeding them bugs right out of brumation because again, they've just lost fat they've lost protein and bugs are going to give them protein. They're going to give them fat. And if you're feeding dubia roaches, I should say that when I say bugs, I mean dubia roaches. I mean crickets. Um, you could do hornworms. I don't mean mealworms or superworms. Those are not very nutritious. But so if you feed them big dubias, hornworms, things like that, they also give a lot of hydration, which is good. Now, I do recommend giving them a bath as well because sometimes they've got some stuck, you know, poop that they need to help stimulate their digestive tract. A bath can help bring them up to temperature too, but I tell you to let them bask first. If you put them right into a warm bath, that drastic temperature change, it's not needed. Let them come up to temp, give them a bath, and then let them dry off, and then in a, in a half hour, feed them their bugs. They'll be in a very good, happy mood for that, especially if they don't like a bath. Then you've just given them bugs after and they forget that you put them in a bath that they didn't like before their own good. And the bath also allows them to drink if you think they need to drink. Uh, otherwise, after that, you just go on your normal day-to-day -day schedule of what you would do. The nice thing of when they brumate, you know, they really shut everything down in their body. It's really fascinating. And you don't have to worry about nails coming out of control. Look at his nails. They're still perfectly flat. Look how his feet sit perfectly flat from the last time we dremeled them. This is the ideal, perfect bearded dragon foot posture right here with toes curved just a little bit to give them a little bit of a hook, but not, and, and being able to rest on the flat palm to give them the, uh, the weight support that they need. That way their whole body isn't standing on their tippy toes. But none of this changed during brumation because they shut down production of basically everything, which is good. We can tell he's got a little bit of shed. Come on, focus on his eye there. Right there on the tip of his eyelid. That we can easily get off in a bath when we drip some water on him or if he shakes his head. So that's no problem. Uh, you know, you give them a look over. Fat pads still look nice and healthy on his head. He, you know, he's not decrepit looking. He doesn't look deflated. You know, there'll be a, a, a normal weight loss, which you'll, you'll be able to tell, and that's fine. I mean, this guy, it was August, September, November, December. We're at the end of January. Four months, this dude didn't poop, didn't eat, didn't drink, just laid there lazily, menacingly. But yeah, guys, so there's no reason to, uh, to worry, and getting out of brumation is really simple as long as you do that. Again, if they get out in the morning, you can let them heat up and feed them. If they get out in the evening, wait till the next day. That's it. Hopefully this video has been helpful. Take care, guys. Thanks so much for all your support. Thank you guys for supporting my reptile rescue family.